My name is Viktor Madevici, and this is my visualization for the Visualization and Visual Analytics class at the University of Illinois at Chicago, taught by Professor Andrew Johnson. The goal of this visualization is to visualize the bathymetry of Lake Michigan and use data from the Great Lakes Observing System to visualize the temperature and water velocity in the lake. The website provides data from January 2006 to December 2010, but the data I used is the temperature and water velocity of the 15th day of each month for the years 2006 and 2010. As you can see, the visualization consists of two areas, the visualization area and the control area. The visualization area is where you can see the actual lake with its temperature and water velocity features. When you load the program, you can see the lake bathymetry with a map drawn on top of it in order to give context on where the main rivers are and where Chicago is. Using the control area, you can control the visualization and change the way you look at the data. Let's start with the water velocity button. By enabling this control, you can see the water velocity for the selected month. Here, for example, for January, we can see that a circular pattern prevails and if we start looking through the other months as well, we will see that the same pattern occurs in March 2010. Also, by disabling the surface button, we can take a better look at the data without having the surface obstructing our view. By pressing the streamline button, we can see the streamline paths at the main river inlets, Fox River, Grand River, and Kalamazoo River. One interesting thing that I found here is that the paths the streamlines follow are the same like the water velocities we observed earlier. So if we go in January 2006 and select Kalamazoo River, we will see again the same circular pattern that we saw in the water velocities. Also in March 2010, selecting Kalamazoo River again, we will see again the same circular pattern. Second interesting finding is that the water velocity near river inlets is greater than in the middle of the lake. We can see that by looking at the color of the streamline near the river inlet. Red means greater velocity and as you can see for all three river inlets the same applies. Now by pressing the temperature isosurface button we can visualize the water temperature using ISO surfaces. Initially, two contours are selected, the lowest and highest water temperature for the selected month. Using the color transform function control, we can either adjust the colors for the contours or add more points so we can get a better understanding on the water temperature of the lake. So I'm going to change the blue color to green and as you can see the colors are changed and now I'm going to add more points so we can have more ISO surfaces and you will see that um, the visualization area is updated with our new selections. It does take a while because each time we select a new contour, uh, everything has to be recomputed. Now, one other thing that this visualization provides is clipping. So if we want to clip through the data, we can do so by using the clipping plane, planes button control. As you can see when enabled, a clipping bounding box appears that you can control to clip through the data. This box is pretty flexible and you can clip in any way you want the ISO surfaces.
Um, one other thing that you may see is that the clipping does not affect the bathymetry, so you can have a nice hue, like somebody removed um, a huge mass of water from the lake. So as you can see now, now that I have my data clipped, some of the data is missing because I clipped it. Okay, I'm gonna remove the clipping plane now so we can continue to look at the visualization. So uh, finally, let's look at the volume rendering. By enabling the volume rendering control, the ISO surfaces are computed in the GPU instead of the CPU. Hence, there is a substantial improvement not only in speed, but on also in the view of the ISO surfaces. You can change the number of ISO surfaces as well as their color mapping using the control transfer function, exactly as we did before. Also, please feel free to download the application from my website and contact me for any suggestions, problems or bugs found. Thank you.